This video is all about what happened at the auction and how I lost just over £10,000 by not underwriting a property that I should have done. Hey, what's up guys? Dan Trevidi here. I hope you're all well. So in last week's video, I talked about some changes coming in the market and how some estate agent friends of mine are telling me that the market is slowing down and we're seeing it in terms of prices being reduced and properties not selling as quickly as they were a couple of months ago. And I said that a true test for me and my market was going to be what happened at the auction. It was one of the busiest auctions I think I've ever seen in terms of number of lots. And uh, I was surprised to see that most of them did actually sell. Some of the properties that I was offered to underwrite because they didn't believe that we're going to even meet the reserve uh, that I wasn't interested in did sell for way over the reserve, which is which is really encouraging. So I do think that it's still a little bit too early to tell that a lot of the scaremongering around jobs and what's happening to the economy in the three tier system and how that is going to impact on the local and national market. I think it's just too early to tell. And what you should definitely not do is make a rash decision, pull out of deals, not buy great deals because you're not sure what's going to go on in the market. It's those types of mass produced ideas and scare tactics that actually enables the entrepreneurs and the property investors to slip between the cracks and pick up some of the really great deals, which last week's auction was no different. I was actually looking to underwrite two properties, I'd been offered four, but I actually changed my mind, was a little bit fearful about potentially buying four properties in one auction. But right at the last minute, I'd been sent the contract to underwrite a commercial property. It was a little bit further out than I would normally go, but it still seemed like a good deal. And um, some, some of the changes coming to the planning system will enable me to do a lot with that property. I quite liked it. The underwrite was a really strong deal, but I hummed and hard and it didn't have all the legal documents. And I kind of used that as an excuse not to underwrite the property. And then a couple of days before the auction, the underwrite deal got pulled from me because they'd had so much interest in the property from outside buyers. And that ended up going for like way over my underwrite deal. And I worked it out that I lost just under £11,000 by not underwriting it. So if I'd had signed the document and not bought the property, not bid on the property, I would have walked away making a pretty good profit. So even in these difficult times where even the most confident people in the market and some of the most brash individuals like myself can even take a little bit too long to make a decision and lose a great deal like I did. I would have actually liked to have bought that deal because of some of the planning changes coming into play, which I'll be doing a video about early next week. So if we look back at that deal, why did I not sign up to the underwrite? It was out of my normal area. Now it wasn't a huge distance away, it was only like 20 miles away, but it was in an area that I always said I wasn't interested in. It didn't have multiple markets, multiple secondary markets. If ifs and buts and changes came to play in the market and legislation, what could I do with that property? And being commercial, if for whatever reason I wasn't able to get the planning change that I thought I was going to be able to, it's not in a massively strong commercial area. But all being said, the purchase price that I was going to underwrite at still made it quite attractive. But I'd already turned down two pretty good deals because I didn't want to underwrite more than two. And then to have this deal pulled from me really kind of got my appetite to know that I did want to do the deal. So I was quite gutted, um, and when it went way over the price, you know, it was a huge kick in the teeth, really, to lose out on just over 10,000, and who knows, I may have even bought it at that price. Um, but the property that I did end up underwriting was pretty much what I was used to in my geographical location, no more than a couple of miles from where I live. An easy three bed to convert to four bed student house, permitted development, no structural work, a quick in and out four to six weeks. I got it at a great price and because I underwrote it, I got some of that money back. So my net cost of that property was great. And I haven't seen properties at that cost in that area for a good six years. So overall, a great deal. Um, I paid one, my winning bid was 136. Take off some of my underwrite fee, I get it for a little bit less than that. After I spend 12, 13, 14,000 on it, it'll be worth 200 to 210. So a great flip, but I'll probably end up refinancing it and renting it to students and letting it tick along quite nicely and add it to my portfolio. Increasing my balance sheet without any of the tax costs, which is kind of all you can hope for at this moment in this marketplace. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some great deals out there. I picked up some great deals uh, before the lockdown, but when the market was a little bit 
uneasy and uncertain when we went through the general election. Now that commercial deal, they've actually done a video about it already, about pre-refurb and some of the numbers. I've overachieved on the numbers that I said I was going to achieve, and I'll be doing a video about that property, about what it looks like afterwards, and how much money that is added to my balance sheet within my company, which is all tax-free at the moment, until I materialize that profit, which is, of course, when I sell it. But if I refinance and pull the money out tax-free, it enables me to buy more deals. And that's kind of what I do and the philosophy of property investment in an entrepreneurial way. But look, what I think is going on in the market, Look, the auction really didn't tell me a lot. It told me that uh, the crap properties still can sell if you get two people that want to buy them. It told me that some of the properties that I thought I was going to pick up quite cheaply didn't go for what I thought they were going to go for. They were going to go. They were. They went for way over it. So it kind of contradicted to what the estate agents are telling me. Now I do know that the two markets are completely different. You get a certain type of property in a certain type of geographical location, potentially in a certain type of condition. And you have to buy it in a certain way, auction versus a standard sale process. And um, one of the reasons why I like auctions so much is because you don't waste time and money when you get a deal agreed and then the other side pulls out. It's done and dusted there and then, the deal is secured, no one can really pull out. Having said that, do I think that the slowdown to Christmas will come? You can kind of already see, and it may be people are being a little bit more cautious with how they're spending the money, how they're saving the money, getting ready to make what is gonna be a different way of celebrating Christmas all the more special. And to do that, you're gonna to need to push the boat out a little bit and maybe make things a little bit more special, which I totally get. So you can kind of maybe understand that the market is slowing down with the build up to Christmas. We'll definitely be able to judge it over the next four weeks as we enter November and then early December and see if that has had the ripple effect that I believe it's having. And it is, it is only a short term, seasonal blip that we would normally get. It's just happening a little bit longer and a little bit sooner. The real judge will be the Boxing Day rush and that, that week between Boxing Day and New Year's Day where you see a huge amount of properties come onto the market and lots of deals, lots of viewings and lots of sales happening. And that will really give us an indication on how big the driver and how big the increase is going to be based on the stamp duty holiday which is due to supposedly to end in March which I don't believe it is something is going to come in to replace it to stop the market falling off the edge of a cliff but look that's it from me really quick midweek video any questions leave me some comments below if you want me to do a video on any type of subject or you follow me on Instagram and you've seen some of my pictures and some of my current or older products and you've got some questions I might do a video on that so feel free to leave me any comment below good or bad don't forget to hit the like button, don't forget to hit subscribe, and I'll catch you all on the next video.